Hi friends and welcome to Starry Hilder's off-grid, oh beautiful off-grid winter homestead. It is the middle of winter and we are indeed surviving with our solar off the grid. It's been close to four years now since we've moved out here to the mountains of Idaho and decided to go 100% off the grid. And we're really happy that we did. And you know what? The solar array that we chose to stick with really has been serving us well. We've learned how to re refine things. We've learned how to uh, fine tweak things. And for the most part, when winter comes along, along now, we don't have any problems surviving off of the electricity that this array provides us. Now I'll show you real quickly kind of our setup here. As you can see, we've got uh, four panels on the bottom and we have four panels on the top. Uh, these are solar world panels. They equal two kilowatts, which is 2000 watts of electricity. So on a day like today, we're actually on float, which means that the batteries are pretty much uh, topped off and we're at full capacity. And, that, and that's a good thing. So winter, winter days when we have sun like this, woo, it's a good thing for the solar uh, batteries and for us. And so I'm gonna keep it real simple. These are Solar World 250 watt mono crystalline panels. Okay, that's what they are. There's a lot of different brands out there. Is one better than the other? I did so much research before I went off the grid. I did a lot of research. I became like a solar expert. I, I should have gotten a, a PhD in solar, really. I read so many books and so much material, and I would read the specs on all these solar panels. And it came down to, they're all pretty close. Uh, you know, and, and the good thing about the solar panels nowadays is that they're all pretty efficient. Uh, they all are very durable. They have good warranties. Uh, you can get them shipped right to your house. You don't have to go uh, with a, a solar guy and, 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 and pay through the nose. So you can get them shipped right to your house. You can set them up yourself. They're not hard to set up. And actually, it's going to be the cheapest part of your solar setup absolutely hands down. So the other part of uh, this array here, and I'm just going to quickly do a little ditty for those of you who don't know. We have a very tall pole. You see, look how tall that pole is. Well, you know, sometimes when you go off the grid, there is a learning curve. And although uh, we had a lot of the stuff down pat, like the hunting and the fishing and the canning and the gardening and all that good stuff, solar still was pretty new to us. So there was a little bit of a learning curve. And when we had our solar set up, we actually did pay for somebody to come and set it up for us. Was it money well invested? Yes, it was, because we were running out of time. Winter was coming. Mr. Hilder was having a breakdown. So the guy decided to build us this huge pole, and on the top of the pole, he actually uh, thought a wind turbine would be the way to go. And we thought too, I mean, it sounded like a good idea. On days when there was no sun, perhaps the wind could take over and we would have more electricity, right? Sounds good. The wind turbine did not work. So then, yeah, we're stuck with the big pole and they put some more panels on there. And you know what? Sometimes you just have to adapt. This is not the best setup. Of course it's not the best setup, but we, we, we're not made out of money. We can't afford a tracker. We couldn't afford to revamp this. So we're stuck with the pole and that's just the way it is. Uh, you know what? When you can learn to adapt, you'll go a long ways and you'll save money. But here's just a little ditty on wind turbines. Just remember, if you are thinking about a wind turbine, uh, you have to have a certain amount of uh, wind and that wind has to be sustainable and it has to get up, a, up to a certain speed before it will even generate any electricity. Keep that in mind. So if you live in the Dakotas or maybe way up high in the mountains where there is sustainable wind, it might work for you. But if you have sporadic wind, it's probably not gonna be the way to go. Buy more panels, they're cheap. Okay, let's go inside and look at the meat of the system. Hey friends, now we're inside and I'm gonna walk you through our solar uh, setup. Now, this is not a tutorial. So just kind of keep that back here by. But I'll show you what we have. Uh, and also, uh, here's a, a couple starry tips if you are really new. Number one, you will see a lot of the brand names 
in most houses over and over and over again. You'll see Xantrex, you'll see Midnight, you'll see uh, uh, Magna. Uh, these are brand names. If you are setting up solar power, wind power for your house, you gotta stick with the brand names. Trace Electric is another one. Brand names. Do not, do not go with these off-brand eBay brands. <laughs> now, that's not to say that if you want a, a small setup for backup, it's okay. But if you're gonna generate your house, you gotta stick with the brand names. And you'll see these names over and over and over again when you start doing your research. And number two, what you see, you can set up yourself. You don't need to be an expert electrician. Now, if you feel uncomfortable, you can hire somebody, but you're gonna pay a lot. Or what you could do is set it up as far as you can, and then you can have an electrician come in and finish it up. Just remember these are reputable companies and you can call them. They're a call away and they will answer all of your questions. That's what they get paid to do. So that's kind of another thing that you have to remember. Uh, number three, buy these uh, components ahead of time. That's what we did to save on the cost. We spread it out throughout the years. All these components can be shipped to your house directly. The last thing you want to buy is batteries. So don't go all gongzo on the batteries. You don't want to buy batteries right away. You want to buy your components and then save the batteries for last. So let's just go through our setup. And as you know, uh, we have a small house. I don't know how many square footage it is, maybe a thousand square feet, but we can run just about any electrical appliance with our setup. But we choose to have a very conservative consumption philosophy because for us, that's life off the grid. That's, that's it in a nutshell. So a couple things that we have here. This is the Magnum Sin Inverter. You're gonna need an inverter. It's going to be big usually. Uh, there's different brand companies out there, but what we have here is an MS4024. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the techie stuff about an inverter, but it is sine wave, which means you can run electronic, TVs, all that good stuff. Uh, for nowadays, with the, with all, uh, you know, everybody's got uh, computers, they've got cell phones, they've got all this digital stuff. You need a sine wave. Uh, we have two charge controllers. Why? Because we had a wind turbine that didn't work. So we originally bought, I believe it was the Xantrex uh, uh, charge controller, and then the Midnight was purchased afterwards for just the turbine. Both of these are very good charge controllers. However, uh, there is a learning curve, I believe, to the Xantrex. Uh, Mr. Hilder doesn't really care for the learning curve on the Xantrex, uh, but it's a very reputable brand. You will see it over and over again. And for a charge controller, they both work very well. And know that these are 60 amp charge controllers. That's kind of the standard for most home setups. Batteries. Now these are interstate batteries. They are six volts. They are lead acid. And we have 16 of those. You will see a lot of off-grid setups use the six volt batteries and they use lead acid. Not going to get into the difference between uh, the gels and the lead, but let's just put it this way. Our lead acid batteries are easy to take care of and actually the only thing that you need to take care of a lead acid battery is distilled water and you got to make sure you have this thing. This is a, a rectometer. See? There you go. So if you don't have one of those, then you're probably not taking care of your batteries too well. But we like the lead acid because you can actually take the caps off. You can visualize the water levels. You can check it with the refractometer and you're good to go. The other thing is, if you notice, we elected to build our battery box inside the shop area. I did a video on batteries and the care of batteries and make sure you watch it because bring you to some sources here this is this is where you got to do your 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 research friends this is the solar electricity handbook of 2017 and just know that lead acid batteries 
don't like the cold. So 77 degrees Fahrenheit is where the battery really likes to be. And it doesn't like to drop below 59 degrees Fahrenheit. So keep that in the back of your mind when you are planning where you are going to put your batteries because a too cold a battery is no good for you and actually a too hot a battery is also no good for you. You, you get up past 90 degrees, that's not good either. So this is the thing with where we live. We chose to bring our batteries inside to the shop area because we have those extremes here. We have, you know, 30, 40, 20, you know, that's winter, and we get below zero, and then in the summer, we get up to 100 degrees. Neither one of those extremes are good for the batteries. So keeping your batteries outside, say in a shed, I was at that off-grid uh, healing place, and they had a shed for their batteries. Sounded like a good idea, right? But right now, when it's below zero, trust me, those batteries are being taxed and they're probably frozen because that shed wasn't insulated. It had no source of heat. And then on the flip side, you can have a really awesome battery insulated box, but if you have 100 degree weather, and even if it's out of the shade and it's in the middle of summer and you're charging your batteries, I hope those batteries don't explode because over 90 degrees is bad for your batteries. So really think long and hard about the location of your batteries and what, what any solar uh, a battery expert would probably recommend with lead acid batteries is you bring them inside to a location like your shop that's heated or garage that's heated. Uh, uh, where uh, in the winter time it's going to be in a warmer environment and in the summer then it's going to be cooler because batteries will last a long time at that optimal temperature. Starry and Mr. Hilder's off-grid solar setup. Now you know, wasn't a tutorial and I kind of got carried away with the battery tip but you know it's a good tip. So for all you friends who oh you really are thinking about this life and you think you can't do it, you can do it! We're not experts, but I tell you what, we didn't need to get a PhD in solar. And we've been doing this for five years now, and we've got it pretty well fine tweaked so that we have all the conveniences of a modern homestead. And we're successfully doing it. Yay! <laughs> so just remember that. All right, keep coming back for more friends, and God bless as always.